Hi, and welcome to Why Do Countries Exist, an episode on Kazakh political parties. So today's episode was requested by Test and Rich Ferrari on YouTube. If you want me to do another country's political parties, please either comment down below, send me an email, send me a message on Patreon for my patrons, thanks to them by the way, or put a request in the feedback and request form in the description. I currently have requests to do Indonesian parties, Argentine parties, Iranian parties, Mexican parties, Armenian parties, Iraqi parties, Singaporean parties, Swedish parties, Finnish parties, Norwegian parties, and many more. Since Kazakhstan gained independence with the fall of the Soviet Union, Kazakhstan has been ruled by Nur Sultan Nazarbayev or his allies. Nazarbayev was president from 1991 to 2019, dominating the country, naming the largest political party partly after himself, and crushing any who opposes rule. In 2019, he stepped down making the way for Kasim Jormar Tokayev to take power. Tokayev is seen as somewhat of a reformer, with him pre-2022 introducing elections for rural mayors and allowing more protests to take place. However, in early 2022, massive protests over at first fuel prices, which then evolved into protests demanding change and more democracy in the country, led to brutal crackdowns which saw almost 10,000 people arrested and Russian troops forced to come to restore order and keep Dukayev in power. However, after the protest, elections were held, which, while still not free or fair, did see some steps towards a fairer process, reducing the number of signatures needed to register as a new party, allowing some independent opposition candidates to run, some constitutional reform to be carried out, and Nazarbayev's influence was reduced. Kazakhstan seems to be inching towards a more democratic model, but it still is under an authoritarian government. Kazakhstan's party system is similar to Russia's party system. There is a dominant party that controls the vast majority of political power in the country, and then there's a couple other allowed semi-opposition parties that are allowed to exist. The dominant party and the semi-opposition parties do have a genuine support base, and the semi-opposition parties do sometimes critique the system, but are also propped up to a certain extent by the state. The semi-opposition won't touch certain subjects, and several even endorsed Tokayev for president in the latest election. The parties we will spend most of the episode are located in the Kazakh parliament and its lower house, the Medjilis. The Medjilis is made up of 98 MPs who are elected from two different ways. 69 are elected via proportional representation, with a party needing to get at least 5% of the vote in order to pass the electoral threshold. Also on the party list, at least 30% of the candidates have to be either a woman, have a disability, or be a member of the youth. The remaining 29 seats are elected via first-past-the-post from 29 constituencies throughout the country. The Medjilis will vote on rules and regulations and approve the president's selection for prime minister, but also is just seen as a rubber stamp for the president. The upper house is the Senate. The Senate is made up of 50 senators who are elected from two different ways. 40 are elected from the 20 regional parliaments, with each region or significant city sending two senators. The remaining 10 are appointed by the president. The Senate is officially nonpartisan, so it's not going to be as focused on as the Medjilis for this episode. So the first party, and the party that really dominates the country, is Amanat, or Commitment. Originally the party was known as Nur Otan, or Radiant Fatherland, as a homage of Nur Sultan Nazarbayev, and it was really his party. It was founded in 1999 as a party meant to help organize his supporters and get them elected into office. It is similar to parties like United Russia or other dominant parties in Central Asia, being broadly conservative, just in the sense that it wants to maintain the status quo, broadly nationalistic, often relying on nationalistic tropes to justify its rule, and also just broadly nothing at all, basing itself far more on loyalty to Nazarbayev pre-2019 and now to Kaya than anything else. Its support base, while it is inflated in large part due to the restricted media nature of the country and the lack of any real opposition allowed to operate in the country, is still real, and tends to be those who feel the transition post-independence has been, for the most part, good. Those who want a strong leader slash government to lead Kazakhstan and protect it from global crisis and instability, or just those who are fearful of the instability a new government might bring. It generally gets the most support in rural regions in the north and the city of Shmakent. Although it generally does well no matter where in the country, with the rural west being the only area according to official results it struggles a bit, it also has a decent number of Russian MPs in the Majlis, so it might be somewhat supported by the Russian community due to the party generally wanting to keep some semblance of ethnic harmony in the country and being friendly with Russia. It currently has 61 MPs. 
It is officially headed by Erlen Kosanov, an MP, and was formerly Tokayev's chief of staff. However, Tokayev as president is the de facto leader of the party, even though he technically isn't a member of the party. The prime minister of the country, Ajez Bektanov, is also a member of the party. Amanat in a program page on the website talks about raising wages for government workers, helping those with a disability more, opposes the privatization of schools, wants to improve the quality of rural medicine, wants to build more housing, wants to build more infrastructure, wants to encourage more young people to enter into politics, wants to build more reservoirs, wants to crack down on tax evasion by the wealthy, and wants to promote the Kazakh language, including ensuring that AI can speak Kazakh and Siri and Alexa have Kazakh language features. In an interview with the National Policy Digest, two party spokespeople talked about how Takaya was trying to move more national funds into children's bank accounts, improving rural medical infrastructure, and saying there should be less government regulation. Nazarbayev's foreign policy has generally been supportive towards Russia, while also being friendly with most other states, including China, the EU, and America. Tokayev was a bit more distant from Russia initially, due to some irredentist comments some Russian lawmakers made early into his rule, and Russia's invasion of Ukraine leading to fears of a possible Russian annexation of parts of Kazakhstan, although for the most part, Kazakh-Russian relations are good. Amanat, having run the country since independence, can claim any good in Kazakhstan is because of them, but they also can be accused of anything bad that has occurred. Kazakhstan isn't a super rich country, and many people live in poverty, so those that aren't well off can, and do sometimes blame Amanat for their predicament. Members of Amanat, including both Nazarbayev and Tokayev, have been accused of corruption, stealing state funds to enrich themselves, which also doesn't help those who feel the transition post-1991 wasn't good, seeing Amanat as a party full of parasitic politicians who just want to steal funds from the average citizen. Amanat is likely the most supportive party in the country, but it also is largely in that position because it is propped up, and the only reason they have won every election is because opposition candidates are often barred from running, arrested, or forced out if they protest too much. While there have been moves towards a more democratic model, Tokayev's still brutally cracked down on protests against him and opposition in the country is very much limited. Amanat is overall seen by a large chunk of the foreign press as a very dictatorial party, and one that is in power largely to enrich itself. The next five parties all have a presence in the Majlis and serve as official opposition, but remain much more on the sidelines. The largest of these parties right now is Aul, or Village, People's Democratic Patriotic Party. Aul was first formed in 2000, mostly being irrelevant until 2015, when it merged with another small irrelevant party and began to see some growth. It went from 2% of the vote in 2016 to 5% of the vote in 2021 to a little over 10% of the vote in 2023, winning seats in the Majlis for the first time presenting itself as a rural social democratic party. It got the most support last election in the rural south and west. It currently has eight MPs. It is currently headed by Serik Egzbev, a MP and former regional MP from the West Kazakhstan region. Aul's main focus tends to be on rural affairs. It wants more investment into rural areas, wanting more investment into rural infrastructure, rural healthcare, and investing into more welfare for those disadvantaged Kazakhstanis. It also supports more democratization in Kazakhstan, and seems to have a bit of a nationalistic streak, wanting to make a requirement for citizenship to speak Kazakh, and not the other official language, Russian. However, despite endorsing a more democratic Kazakhstan, it is still seen as an ally to Amanat and the status quo. It in 2015 endorsed Nazarbayev for president, ran in 2013 against Tokayev, but didn't actually challenge him. Aul also seems to be connected to large agro-business companies and oligarchs. Aul is like the other parties we will soon talk about, opposition to Amanat, but not really opposition. None of these parties seem to really challenge the power of Amanat and pull their punches when advocating for policy or campaigning in an election. Admittedly, they are constrained by their lack of funding and lack of big personalities, but that is also because they don't actually penetrate deep into Kazakh society. They, like Amanat, do have genuine supporters and do represent something in Kazakh society and politics, but they are largely propped up by the ruling class to point at and say, look, we have some democracy. After Aul, we have Respublika. Respublika is a fairly young party that appeals to the youth in Kazakhstan. It was founded in early 2023, shortly before Kazakh elections, by Azerbek Konezhirov, a businessman. Konezhirov tried to present his party as a new hit movement for young, business, and internet-savvy Kazakhstanis. It seems to, at least based on pictures from their website, to be a largely male-dominated party, and most of the party's leaders seem to be heads of companies in the country, so I'd imagine it could have the image of a pro-business party as well. It got the most support last election somewhat in the center of the country and in the west. It currently has six MPs. Kornezhdov is currently an MP. The party seems to be a somewhat center-right party. It seems to support more digitization, increased transparency, 
and talks about revising the tax code to make innovation and business more profitable. On its website, it talks about how its leaders have, quote, a path to individual success, unquote, which might point to a more individualistic view of society, the economy, and welfare. But information seems to be somewhat sparse on the party, so I'm not going to speculate too much. A pro-business party with more to talk about is Akjol, or Breypath, Democratic Party of Kazakhstan. Akshol was formed as a breakoff of the Democratic Choice of Kazakhstan Party, a strongly anti-government liberal party. Akshol represented those liberals who wanted a more reformist movement that worked inside the system. It can represent over time both those that wanted a more limited democratic reform along with the business class, as many of the party's founders were businessmen, and has a generally center-right policy. It has historically been the second largest party in the country, with it every election from 2012 to 2021 getting the second most votes behind Amanat, of course, and being the largest opposition party, although in 2022 it joined the People's Coalition, which was headed by Amanat. It, however, took a bit of a slump this latest election, with Kazakh voters wanting newer voices and many instead choosing to vote for Ayul or Respublika or just some other newer party. The party still won a decent chunk of the vote, but if it will continue to be as prominent among the semi-opposition parties remains to be seen. It got the most support last election in the western parts of the country, Astana, and the North Kazakhstan region. It currently has six MPs. It is headed by Azat Purusev, AMP, and former chairman of the National Economic Chamber of Kazakhstan. Akjol is a center-right liberal party, so it supports free market economics and limited reform. It wants a more transparent state budget and supports privatizing state businesses. It supports a stronger parliament, advocating for the eventual transition to a parliamentary republic, wants a system of checks and balances, supports term limits, and wants Kazakhstan to eventually join the EU. It also describes itself as a spiritual successor of the Aslan movement that was active in the late 19th century to the Russian Civil War, so wants to promote the Kazakh language and opposes religious extremism. The other traditional semi-opposition party besides Akjol is the People's Party of Kazakhstan, or QHP. QHP, like Akjol, was formed from a moderate breakoff of a more radical opposition party. In 2004, the QHP broke off from the Communist Party of Kazakhstan and began contesting elections presenting itself as a Communist Party similar in vain to the Communist Party of the Russian Federation or the Communist Party of the Republic of Moldova, a force that opposed privatization and sought to represent those who felt the fall of the USSR was mostly negative. It, in 2012, managed to get a presence in the Majlis, and like Akjol, joined the People's Coalition in 2020, and then saw a decline in support in the 2023 election. In 2020, it also dropped its communist ideology, and is now a socialist-slash-social-democratic-ish group. It got the most support last election in urban areas, or areas with a large population, and among older voters. It currently has five MPs. It is headed by Erkhamet Erstebev, a former ambassador to Belarus and Georgia. The QHP is generally opposed to further free market reforms and supports more liberal political reforms. It supports progressive taxes while abolishing the value-added tax, wants to reconsidering the results of legal privatization, and backs further nationalization, supports union rights, wants a state to provide higher salaries to those working in dangerous industries like mining, wants to give more financial support to mothers, and wants more investment into infrastructure. It supports more power to be given to the Majlis, wants directly elected mayors, wants more women to enter into office, and wants to fight corruption. It also supports closer relations with Russia and China, and wants more investment into the army. Finally, the last party in the Majlis is the Nationwide Social Democratic Party, or JSDP. The JSDP was formed in 2006 from the supporters of Zhermakhan Tuyakbaev, the main opposition candidate in the 2005 presidential election, who was supported by the Communist Party of Kazakhstan and the Democratic Choice of Kazakhstan. It was unlike the other parties we have talked about, appeared to be a more genuine opposition party, arguing for center-left and democratic reforms in the country. In 2019, Tryuk Bayev stepped down as leader of the party, and the party appeared to become not as anti-establishment. It was able to pass the electoral threshold in 2023 for the first time, getting the most support broadly in the South and West. It currently has four MPs. It is headed by Ashat Rakhmenejov, a political scientist. The JSDP is similar to Ayul and the Respublika, somewhat vague on their website, so it's kind of hard to make sense of what they stand for. It generally seems to support a stronger Majlis, an independent media ecosystem, and social democratic slash center-left economic and social reforms. So those are the parties in the Majlis and are the main players in the country's politics, at the very least at the institutional level. But I figured I'd take a brief moment to explore the opposition. The size and strength of each organization I bring up is disputed. Those sympathetic to the opposition, or more accurately, sympathetic to that flavor of opposition, 
will argue that some of these parties are actually very widespread and have a decent chunk, if not a majority, of the country backing them. However, those more sympathetic to the government will argue most, if not all, of these parties are small, largely irrelevant groups. The group that gets the most press, at the very least in the West, is the liberal or liberal-ish opposition. Being made up of those who want Kazakhstan to transition to a liberal democracy, remove the old guard of Nazarbayev, Tokayev, and their allies, likely align more with the West in some form, and also likely back some form of progressive social policy, such as greater gender equality or LGBTQ rights. I had previously mentioned the democratic choice of Kazakhstan, and they still operate in the country. Besides them, there is also the Democratic Party of Kazakhstan. However, the liberals aren't the only opposition bloc in the country. Leftists, wanting either a return to the days of the USSR, or just hostile towards capitalism, have the Socialist Movement of Kazakhstan or the Communist Party of Kazakhstan, although both parties are banned by the authorities. Kazakh nationalists are those who feel the government should take a stronger tone slash position on the Russian minority of the country, and or should move away from Russia and align with other Turkish states, have the Aslan National Freedom Movement, which seems to be mostly dead but preached a pan-Turkish ideology, or the support of the Nation Party, which was formed from an ex amanat MP and represented an anti-lockdown, anti-Russian ideology. Among Kazakhstan's ethnic minorities, it wouldn't surprise me to see some form of separatism slash autonomous movement. Russian Kazakhstanis have at several points led small-scale protests slash quasi-rebellions, particularly in the 90s. Finally, while Kazakhstan is a fairly secular country, there are Islamic groups, including the Islamic Party of Eastern Turkestan, hezbi u tahrir and Al-Qaeda, that operate in the country, although their influence seems to be extremely limited. So those are the parties of Kazakhstan. In conclusion, there is Amanat, which is the ruling party and represents the allies of the current and past president, being an ideologically kind of conservative or just pro-status quo party. In Parliament, there are several other parties who are quasi-opposition, with Ayul representing somewhat rural people and somewhat social democrats, Respublika, a party for young entrepreneurs, Akshul, a party for moderate liberals and reformers, the QHP, a party for moderate leftists or the, just those that want a stronger state, and the JSDP, which represents social democrats and is on paper the most extreme anti-government party, but how true that is is up for debate. It is very similar to the Russian party system, as I kind of stated earlier, with a very large main party that kind of dominates the country, and then a whole bunch of other smaller semi-opposition parties, although they all have their unique Kazakh twist to them. But uh, yeah, thanks for listening, thanks for watching. Uh, thanks to Terry O'Hara for the donation on PayPal, I really appreciate it. And uh, up next, I will do the history of the Cook Islands. I finished research, and I'll start writing probably whenever this episode comes out. I don't think it'll take super long, um, although I am going to be pretty busy with work. I'm going to guess and say probably early April is when that episode will come out, but we'll see. And then after that, I will do Indonesian parties. And then after that, I will do the history of Costa Rica. So thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. If you want, you can email me at whydocountriesexist at gmail.com for your thoughts, comments, suggestions, or hate mail. Take care. I have a wonderful rest of your day.